just gonna start the, with the sing along. <laughs> Everybody turn their mics on. And... That would be wonderful. Okay, so good morning. Uh, good morning, Mr. J. Jack. Hello, hello. <laughs> um, affectionately known as J. Jack. Mm -hmm. J. Jack. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, just welcome to uh, A Tech High School, and thank you for for joining us. Hey, so um, I'm recording now. Yes, sir. Thank you for being here, everybody. So if any of you guys um, want to turn on your cameras, obviously, um, you know, you're welcome to. If you'd like to maybe turn on your camera just for a quick minute. Or even if you just had a question. Good morning. Yep. And introduce yourself and just say good morning to, uh, to Jay Jack. And then you can keep your camera off for the rest of the, the interview. But, um, you know, it is nice just to say hello that way with the camera on. Um, but of course, you don't have to. I don't want you to know they're still in bed. I know. <laughs> Which is I thought about, like, I've thought about it at times. Like, I'm just going to teach from bed. I'm just going to keep the camera off and just be lying down. <laughs> and you just, you never, never. Just, know that, 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 that people have been doing it like they. Well, of course. I mean, it's a, it's a different situation. I mean, it's. I wouldn't worry about it. I mean, I think that I probably, if I was in high school, yeah, I probably would have done the same thing. Okay. So, so introduce <laughs> yourself to us. Tell us, tell us a little bit about um, who you are and what you do currently, and then we'll backtrack. Okay. So I'll start with currently. Like currently, I'm a high school art teacher. It's actually CTE teacher. I teach career and financial management, and I teach digital art, sometimes drawing. But um, <clears throat> I'm from Richmond Hill, Queens, uh, originally Jackson Heights. Uh, I'm a first generation American and first generation artist. My father's from Croatia, my mother's from Ireland. Oh, St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Oh, wow. Happy St. Patrick's Day. So yeah, I'm 50% Irish, 50% 50, 50 Croatian. But like, you know, I think that um, being from New York and, and being a first generation artist kind of uh, starts you out with like a, I mean, I, Feel like it's like a kind of a disadvantage because you don't know what you're doing and you don't have a lot of backup you know i think um i've thought about this a lot like um tell me if i'm getting off topic i feel like i have a tendency no, to just kind right. of we like we off. like we like artist tangents i do at least well it's um i kind of lost my train of thought um <sighs> First generation, you know, it's interesting because I am also a first generation. Okay. I'm half Iranian and half French and um, first generation American. Yeah. And I'm also a CTE art teacher. So we have a lot of similar. <laughs> true, true. Um, yeah, but you were saying what you were saying was that um, that it's, right. it's hard. Starting at a disadvantage. Right, right. Because, yeah, I mean, it's. It's not, people are harsh. I mean, in Queens, man, people are mean. In New York, people, if you're, people who are from New York have got, it's like all trauma. You deal with so much trauma. People are hard on you. Yeah. And it is tiring and hard. And it's like, yeah, the thing I was trying to say, I just remember was that the, <clears throat> the safety net. It's like, when you're from New York, you're, you're you know, Queens, I, I, it's not like we have like this giant, uh, safety net of money so it was like the hard part for being an artist for me was that <clears throat> it's like you have money and then you don't have money and then you have money and you don't have money so um <clears throat> it worked out great for me just having art as a path I think that that was like the greatest thing for me and I always recommend that if you have a passion you just keep it right in front of you at all times because you know I went to god my middle schools you all New Yorkers must have had a horrifying middle school <laughs> I went to uh, Rockaway Boulevard. I went to uh, junior high school 226, which is like. Was your middle school tough? Yeah, I missed. Um, Look at this. I missed the last two weeks of middle school because someone punched me in the eye and uh, they got suspended. And they say they're. You, this, imagine this the school said, you probably shouldn't come back uh, until. Uh, <laughs> they said that to you? Mm -hmm. And they were like, we're not really allowed to say this, but you probably shouldn't come back. Oh my gosh. Mm. Very, very violent school. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. Um, it's like both, I, I feel both humbled by it and still scarred by it. But 
Um, no, so the, the thing I was trying to get across was like uh, this middle school, as horrifying as it was, the art teacher there said, oh, you should go to art and design high school. Oh, you're so, kidding. No, and, and so like, um, you know, and I've been all, all through New York City public school. So the, this teacher was just like, oh, you're, you know, he's, he was always so nice. He said, I always appreciate that you draw, because uh, nobody drew, nobody did anything. <laughs> Uh, and, and so he's like, I always appreciate that you do the lessons and you do such good stuff and you always hang out my work. And he just said, this is like not having any um, support as a, as a first generation artist. It's like my family's from Europe, so they don't know anything about the New York City school system. Okay. So when I'm going to high school, it's all on me. And so, so having- did you have a, sorry to interrupt you, but did mm. middle school art teacher recommended um, high school for art and design and did you is that the high school you went to i had no it's like yeah it cracks me up the whole way through my life it's just like i don't know what to do and i'd be like all right what should i do well i like art so i should go to an art school so apply for high school of art and design i actually applied for the school i'm currently working at bayside high school oh, and, and, and the weird i just found my portfolio from my audition to bayside high school wow that's cool to be a pack rat um no, so like it was just that. So I had one suggestion. So this teacher says you should go to art and design high school. And I'm like, all right, I'll go to uh, that's what I'm gonna apply to. I applied to art and design high school. So I went to art and design high school. And then you know, it's like you get to art and design high school. It's kind of a mess at the time. It's it's the most beautiful school in the world now. They have like stained glass in the cafeteria. <laughs> anyway. Wow. Being from a different era. So anyway, so the you know, I just I've been I there, but I don't remember seeing that stained glass. Yeah, in the cafeteria, okay. it, that just white the cafeteria, and you look up, and this angelic white cafeteria, and then stained glass by Art Spiegelman. Anyway, <clears throat> so the the what happened to me? You know, I go to art design high school, and then you're going to graduate. It's like, well, I should go to college. What should I do? I guess I should go to art school because I like art. So I, and I've had people say to me, like from my neighborhood, they're like, oh, you're, you were always so lucky. You're so lucky that you had art. I was like, why, what does that even mean? And then you realize like people are going to college and like, they don't know why they're going to college. Like they might think like, oh, I'm just going to take, oh God, I don't know. Right. So it's, it's having that, that passion that to like connect you to things, <clears throat> just like this automatic thing that gives you an advantage. And I didn't realize it at the time, but it's like, I always had a straight path. I mean, a winding path eventually, but you always have this thing that guides you through. So this is a little bit of an early, this is a question that I end up asking, I guess, later in the interviews. But um, so for you, you know, when you were in high school, you, you started really early knowing what you wanted to pursue and what you wanted mm -hmm. to focus on. So what can you say to my um, high school students, not just seniors, but what, what, advice, just... what advice do you have for students that love art, but are unsure whether or mm -hmm. not that's what they want to pursue in college? Well, I mean, what I've come to find is that, <clears throat> actually I have a really funny story about this from Richmond Hill, Queens. Somebody once said to me, I don't know how we grew up in the same neighborhood, and he was saying, like, I've been in, like, over 300 fights, uh, you know, like, going out late at night and just, like, and uh, that day I was coming home from middle school and I was absolutely furious about something that went down. And so while he's saying this to me on the phone, I'm drawing a picture of Spider-Man wearing a turtleneck. <laughs> and then he was like, I don't know how, and I, I just had that moment where I was like, I don't know how we live such different lives. And I'm like, because I had a place for my anger. I had a place for my frustration. I had a place for um, living, just taking these things and expressing them without having to internalize it. So I had a place to let go of these things. So <clears throat> you're always gonna have people saying, uh, you know, th this is so common when you're an artist, especially a young artist, it'll be like, you're so excited about your work and you're like, what do you think of this to an adult? And they're like, wow, you must have a lot of free time. <laughs> And it was like, I remember, I still can feel like the like a gunshot to the chest. You're just like, oh God. Or it's like, deflating. and it's, it's people who don't know how to support your creativity. So I, I think the number one thing is just like, use it, use it as a tool for yourself to just express yourself. Like, cause I, I think of it as like two kinds of artwork, like 
personal artwork that's expressive. It could be abstract, it could be collage. I mean, wait, look at this. This kind of stuff, like, <clears throat> why do I need this? <laughs> oh my God, wait, wait, hold that up again. That's adorable. <laughs> and it's like, uh, there, there's certain things with this stuff. Like I was, um, uh, someone sticking their tongue out and like, what am I going to do with these things, right? But it was so, and I have a three-year-old daughter. More important question is not, not why do you need this, but, but why did you make it in the first place? Well, I mean, I just came to enjoy it. Like, this is why I end up, wound up being a teacher is because I started working with elementary school kids and you start to see how much natural ability they have, but they don't realize it. And same all for all of you. Like, think about how critical you are of, of your own work. <clears throat> and I mentioned other people too. Other people are going to be critical of your work, and you kind of have to learn how to withstand it. Hey, I, I've been told that I'm talentless and wasting my life. <laughs> no joke, really. And the thing is, like, I that could have completely dissuaded me from being an artist. But you said that to you, do you remember? <clears throat> of course. I do, but I'm not going into it. <laughs> right, right. Okay, yeah. Sorry. No, it's okay. It's yeah. it's and the, the crazy thing about it, I was so traumatized by that that I. I couldn't remember for years what it was that they said. It was like this mental block. And I was like, God, I remember being so angry, but what was it that they said? It, it took years. Wow, to remember and, that. Yeah, and I, I, I have, uh, I mean, it would be like an interesting study, but like I couldn't draw for weeks after that. Like every, my drawings had like become like this very distinct, weird, for two weeks I had this weird style that I had never drawn in. And this is what I mean about like anger. Like I was furious, I was sick and just disheartened by that. Uh, and I, you know, I just accidentally, just because it became like a, co art became like a coping skill for me. Um, and so uh, actually this, this is actually a good thing to bring up. So especially for art, like, um, or anybody in high school, I had, for my last year of school, I had type one diabetes. I'm a type one diabetic. So, I had a really bad year that year and Senior. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and I didn't know what it was. So I, I just like the number one thing is like health, always health. First thing is health. And I think that this is the, you know, I'd say like, get a job with insurance, go to Starbucks, get a job with insurance, because if you don't have your health, uh, you have, it's not going to work for you. And I've really struggled through the years trying to manage my health. It's very, very hard. Uh, and, you know, teaching has been great for that because it gave me, you remember I mentioned about like being from New York, it's like no money, money and, and teaching has leveled me off, but it's also protected my health. So I never fall into like a real slump with my health and bring it to, I, I find that, you know, during all these hard times, I'm like looking into like those, those self-help books and it's like how to be successful, how to be more organized. None of them ever say, get insurance and make sure that you're healthy. It's never the first thing. Wow. And so, so, do, like, so, so uh, do you, so are you advocating, obviously, teaching as yeah. a potential well, profession for artists? I think that the interesting thing for me was that I started, when I started teaching, actually, we were the, I did an after school art program at the school that I, my elementary school that I went to. So it, it just, it made me realize that like all of my encouragement came from my art teachers. All of it like it was just like that was like the thing that drew uh, always brought me through and it never even occurred to me that they knew how to encourage you um you know i remember this is like first grade i remember doing a drawing in kindergarten and getting a compliment from my teacher and then one day in first grade i did the same drawing because i remember he complimented it and he said wow i remember you did that last year and that like i never forgot that moment because wow. he remembered it so uh, that, I mean, that, that also ties into what I think all artists should do. And, and most artists, like in high school, you probably already have a certain community of people around you who are artists. And I think finding people who will be supportive of you uh, is the most important thing. And also being devoted to it. Like that moment when someone told me I'm talentless, right? Like that was one of those like out of body moments. Like, like one, it's like almost like blackout rage, but it's also like... Um, a moment where I realized that they're just trying to hurt me. You know, like, I, I think we all get very reactive. Like someone says something to you, you're automatically angry. Like you want to yell at somebody, but sometimes you just have that moment where it's like, 
And I was, I was dedicated to my art and I worked so hard that I knew that that wasn't true. Mm -hmm. And so I had that moment where I was like, they're really just trying to hurt me. And so I was able to kind of like let that slide off. I mean, it, it didn't just slide off. I mean, but I didn't, you know. So I love what you said about, you know, you and the other person, you know, both growing up in exactly the same neighborhood in Queens and yet having like he, he, that person, I'm assuming it was a male. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> gotten into three, like 300 fights. Mm -hmm. And at that time you were drawing Spider-Man in a turtleneck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so and, and that's you know, amazing. But my question is, so so you were starting, you were drawing comic characters way back when. As well, well, actually, see that's that's a, uh, something interesting too. Is that as a young person, I I I fell into the thing where my art wasn't mine anymore. It was the thing that it was supposed to be, and so I remember many many moments where I was like, Yeah. So let's talk about that. Yeah. So Sorry, I'm no, no, it, but it's it's the I was just like an incessant doodler, cartoonist, and you know there was that thing where there's always that kid in school who draws like a perfect Betty Boop, and everyone's screaming about how great it is, and like, hey, draw me Betty Boop, and they're I just kids like, don't probably know who Betty Boop is. Oh well, not even Betty Boop. Let's say Donald Duck, Mickey Mouse. Someone has like the perfect Bart Simpson, whatever it is, or like Dragon Ball Z character. Right, because they're copying they start yeah. off copying right and the but there's a talent in that too because that's like proportion and measurement and yeah. you know there's something my daughter screaming in the background um but th there is a talent in that and some in people china, have in china yeah. in art school what I, i've seen documentaries about this um artists that are training in china the first mm -hmm. lessons they have you do are to replicate a master work Mm -hmm. perfectly so they're not copying right. Donald Duck or Mickey Mouse but but you see I think that skill first right but I also think the thing that I always say about that is like do you want that skill because I think there's always this focus on like realism because that's always going to get a reaction it's like look you drew a dog and it looks like a dog so then, it, do you need that skill is more is the more important question well, I mean, oh, if you want to i think okay. that that's the thing that happens is that you start to think this is the only thing that people react to so that's the only thing i should be doing and this is where i say like look i show this to my mom what's she gonna say nothing <laughs> like i I've, I've worked on paintings for like months and then i show it to my mother she's like what's that white spot i'm like what white spot what are you talking about and they don't, it's like they don't see anything. Right. So I, I think like this is something that I used to do, the cartooning, because there was a freedom in it. Because if I try to draw a Batman perfectly, someone's going to say, oh, his face looks weird. Oh, you messed up his arm. That, and that, that's a, a quote that I got. I did a drawing of a realistic person and I made it very stylized. And someone says, the leg is weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Never stops, right? You know? So, um... I'm going to switch over to um, uh, the, I just want to show the Padlet just very, very quickly. Sure, yeah, yeah. Find it, yeah, so, um, actually maybe I should stop sharing my screen and I'll, yeah. I'll look for it first. But, you know, I just. Yeah. Some of our students, that was some of the, their questions. Well, yeah. before I get into that. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's talk about um, what you are making, what kind of art are you making now and is it connected to what you used to make and well it's it, i think that uh art actually art school was very traumatic because they i had to t I, I was in the illustration program and high school or college 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 okay, in, so in college, college uh so, oh, right this is another part of that just that journey uh high school i go to high school because the teacher says you should go there and no other and no other reference point uh, and then another person said, uh, then, then after high school, where do I go to high school? Oh, there's ads for SVA all over the subway. I'll go to SVA. And that's how I went to SVA. Just like there's ads on the subway and they look nice. So I was like, oh, I'll go to SVA. School of Visual Arts. Yeah. And this is like, again, like that first generation artist thing, first generation American is that you don't have um, that automatic knowledge of like, this college does this and that college does that. And that is a huge amount of work for anybody who's not going to have that help. It's, it's um but let's see what else i mean in general so, yeah so you go to school of visual arts and mm -hmm. you majored in illustration 
Yeah, and that was a weird moment too, because I don't know if they're cartoon. I wanted to do comic books and cartooning, and they kind of just pushed me toward illustration, which is something I had an interest in, but I, I wanted to go into cartooning more. And that was something, and this, I don't, I would imagine this doesn't happen now. I feel like cartooning is much more um, well-respected and, and uh, treated with more regard. And it's surprising that at that time that that would happen, but. Especially at an art school. I know, I, I found it very strange because. Why um, do you think, I have my suspicions why they did that. Why do you think that they pushed you out of the comic division well, to illustration? Well, because like, I think, and this is again like the thing your art has to be so i always wanted to draw comics but i was so intimidated by it because throughout this whole i still feel this like i'm not meant to be an artist like oh i'm not i'm not the kind of person that's supposed to be an artist uh and then it's and it's still i still have that but i i found a way to make my art something that's mine and i don't stress about what other people say about it but <clears throat> i still get that kind of intimidation <laughs> And I feel very lucky that I haven't lost it. You, you meet so many adults who are just like, oh, I don't have time. And I feel like I've, I've been able to, my art's been able to adapt to my situation. But oh, what was I saying? We were just talking about college, right? Yeah, I was asking, why do you think, why do you think that at oh. School of Visual Arts, they pushed you right. from the co focusing right. on comics and into the illustration department? So it's I have my suspicion, but well, I'm curious what... Well, what they said to me was that I don't have any comics in my portfolio, which I thought was it's like, you have mostly still images or, or single images. So therefore you're an illustrator. Oh, I see. And, and, and there is a logic to that. And I did want to do, that was always my goal is to do like magazine illustration and comics and, you know, um, art and design actually, which I actually think it's funny because the, a teacher at art and design said to me, uh, the person who has the most the ability to work in multiple styles will get more jobs and it's actually become completely untrue i disagree with that as well yeah and and back then though i think like he was a freelance artist and so he could apply for a job and he's got paintings he's got drawings he's got charcoal he's got all these different options for someone to choose from uh and so like maybe back then it was harder to find artists that you'd probably want that more you know variety but right. currently it's like if you're not a brand and you're not doing this is just what people used to say to me it's like you have too many styles and i'm like how is that a bad thing how is that bad mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know and i think teaching has been great because it allows me to explore so many different realms without worrying about my portfolio and my you know like this isn't productive that that used to haunt me because it would be this i shouldn't be doing this because this is my portfolio and I have to be developing this and have to be working to build a brand for myself. Um, would you mind um, showing us some of your work? I don't know how you would prefer oh, to do oh, that. Um, I mean, I, I would typically just go through Instagram because. OK, cool. That, that's like the most current stuff I have. I could share my screen. That would be great. That's actually um, your Instagram is what I was showing uh, my students yesterday. How do I share? I'm sorry, I'm not. That's okay. on Zoom. I, don't, I usually use Google Meet. Is, oh, okay. share yeah, there's a, at the bottom, there's a green. Oh, there it is. Got it. Yep. Share screen. Okay. Or I should do this. So now we'll see your message. Yeah, okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Awesome. Yep. So this this is the stuff that I do. And uh, I, I find actually really, some of these I'm really very proud of. And it's, it really is just exploration and, and like. Yeah, why don't you show us your favorites? Well, I mean, I just, I love this. Like I've gotten really excited about doing stuff like this and like uh, building in texture. And, you know, I noticed in newspapers that you could see the text on the, in the, on the back. So I took some text and I reversed it and I laid it over it. And oh, the you know, back I, I guess, and this is one of those things that I've always been interested in. I used to do sketches like this in college and I couldn't draw it. You know, I would, I would like try to draw Archie Bunker and I wouldn't be able to. So like this kind of thing would be frustrating for me. But so now now Photoshop. Doing, I'm assuming, yeah, Photoshop. Too. So Photoshop as a tool is helping you as an illustrator. I mean, obviously, and, and, all of right. Us. And and now here, there's another one. Like, think about the guy who said, uh, "I've been in over 300 fights." This is me. Wait, that's not the one. I have Batman throwing a watermelon, which I think is hilarious. <laughs> I mean, even stuff like this. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Where is where is? Here he is. Who who's asking me to make Batman throwing a watermelon? 
Uh, I mean, I, I'm a, a member of a, well, I host an animation club on Fridays. Oh, cool. <clears throat> and since we've gone remote, we've been doing weekly challenges. So that was a challenge, someone throwing something. Uh, so this, you, um, your, your animations actually that you've been posting on Instagram, I love, love. Well, thank you. It was. And I actually, that's how we got, how James is visiting us because I reached out to him to say, to ask him, how is he making these animations? Because they're so super cool. Um, and can you show us another, a few more animations and then talk to us about how you're making them? This, I was so <laughs> excited by this. I'm scared, I'm scared this is gonna be really loud. No, go for it. Why is it doing that? Hello? Uh, oh, I see. There you go. And it's not letting me make it. Oh, push the but play button and then maybe. Mm, it's not working. Oh, bummer. Well, anyway, the, the thing about this one is like I put the sound of wind blowing the brush and it was just the simplest thing. It's two frames, two frames, and you create this kind of weird, um, I don't know, very atmospheric thing. Well, actually, more animation. So the animation thing has been very cathartic for me because um, sometimes you just don't have a lot of time to draw. Hey, there's my first job, one of my first art jobs. I was 16 years old. How in the world did I manage to get a job when I was 16? It was a friend of a That's friend. That's amazing. Tell us, what was, oh, tell us, what, is that, what did you do there? What is that job when you were 16? This was at an, it was like a sweatshop. It was an embroidery factory that was so unbearably hot that I would be soaked with sweat every day. And I still showed up every five days a week for the entire summer. Wow. Uh, and then worked on the weekends at a comic book shop. So this um, was just the weirdest experience, but it was amazing too. Just, you know, I had a, 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 one of the friends uh, at the comic shop, his father worked at an embroidery factory and they needed an artist. You know, I wonder if they paid me less, but it was um, you know, just, you know, it, there was a whole new system for this that I had to figure out. And it was very slightly uncomfortable with certain things, but as a learning experience, just like unbelievable. Let's see what else. Um, so what's the name of the, um, oh, we were looking at those, those half, half ones. That one is uh, so uh, creepy. I know, but you know what it was? I, I couldn't remember what it was at first. It's the texture. You see the texture of his skin? Oh. It weirdly matched the, it's just ridiculous. It How weirdly many? matched the cone. So that is that what, is that what triggered the connection? Yeah, and I because I, the thing is, like, when you're doing half and half, sometimes it's very complicated and it can be very awkward. So I, try, I tried to kind of modify it so that there was some room for going in a different direction. And I thought that it was a pretty successful. It was a really fun lesson. And some people really got it, but the Photoshop can be... <laughs> how about Justin Bieber's Iron Man? <laughs> and it's, and that, I said Iron Man, RoboCop. Oh, my gosh. Um, Oh, and that, uh, Miley. Oh my God, Miley that's Bieber. a good one. That's, um, what is her name? Miley Cyrus. Cyrus. And it, it worked out pretty well. Some, some of them would just work automatically. Some of them are really, don't just kind of fall apart. So guys, um, those of you who haven't seen his work before, um, this is, I mean, it's obvious to me, but that, go, go back to that one. That's, so what, what Jay Jack did was he took half Oops, yeah. Cyrus, half Justin Bieber and yeah. put them together. And you know this. This is where I I I used to feel so afraid and guilty about experimenting like this. But being a teacher, I find that versatility is good for me. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's it's weird, like um, finding the a place where your skills are valuable. Mm -hmm. And I think the diversity of what I do is is I think has been very successful for me as a teacher and very helpful too. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I guess it's just you know, finding a place that will value yeah. what you do. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm trying yeah. to open up that illustration there. The Which one, one above, uh, the animation, the one in the pastel. Oh, I love this. 15 frames. <laughs> it blows my mind. But I think like these delight okay. me so much, like being able to create things like this, it's 15 drawings. So talk to us about how you're making these animations. Oh, flip a clip. I cannot recommend flip a clip enough. Okay. So what and, is flip a clip? Tell, uh, and, and, tell our people. Yeah, it's this free app that you can just download. Okay. Uh, and I, I mean, I just, oh, the, this is my favorite one I've ever done. I couldn't believe it. I still find 
with art, you know, how I'm so self-critical that I'm still blown away that I could do any of this. Oh, I love that one. I mean, I can't even believe that I made that. I, mean, I stared at this for about an hour, just watching it over and over again. <laughs> Complete disbelief. And I think- Those of you who are, who are in this Zoom call, <clears throat> no, you will be downloading Flip a Clip. You will be- nice. It is so fun. And I think the coolest thing about it is that you just kind of learn, like, actually, wait, the, the, you learn animation just by, like this one is so simple. The way that water works, like I just moved clouds around and the, think of, look at the waves at the bottom. That's just a different, a line. It's just drawing a line. So all I did was just draw a line and it looks like water. So you start to figure out things like motion and movement. And uh, as yeah. I, the more I do these, the smoother they get. I could show you some like of my earliest ones and they were so just like choppy and awkward and and it got, it got better so fast. Let me, hold on, let me go back. So like, look how awkward that is. And this is when I was first trying to figure it out. And you can see how it evolves as they go through it. Like all of a sudden I start to figure it out. And that took absolutely- So what is it, what is it explain to us what it is that you figure it out exactly. Like I can it, see that yeah. you are, illustration style looks more sophisticated as the animation goes, but. Well, it's what actually, it's funny that I think that this is like a, a thing that, that cripples people artistically, but I find that I go in with a very concrete idea of what I want. Okay. And so I'm like, okay, this is going to be, and sometimes it works like that UFO one, it worked. I couldn't believe it. So what was your, what did you go in? Wh what did you want to accomplish when you started the UFO one? I was just like motion and I, I accidentally did something that I knew how to do. I was like, okay, I know how to make something look like it's moving fast. And so I started that one with nothing. I didn't have a concrete idea at all. I just went in there, I drew a shape and it became a UFO. But the ones where I go in there with a very concrete idea, I find myself very frustrated. But the, the coolest thing about it is that I just, I, it's like a, a thing that I, I realize is a strength of mine is that I just persist. It's a, it may be because I use art as a coping skill. So when it doesn't work, I just morph it into something else. Okay. And the interesting thing is like, I could delete, if I wanted to, I could delete the whole first half of these animations and just take one section of it and develop that into something else. But I, I always find that when I start with a very, very concrete idea, and this is, this is all based on my, my schedule and how much time and energy I have. I find myself so tired that I do these to just, it's like, just like, like meditating, like jogging, like, like just walk, taking a walk for me. It relaxes you. Yeah. And so I, I'm not putting pressure on myself. If I was trying to be an animator, I would have to, I would say like, this has to be a certain way. You know, I have a friend who's a, a computer animator for like movies and in art design high school. And he, I was looking at his Instagram. I was like, you deleted a whole bunch of stuff. And he's like, well, you know, I'm a, you know, I don't, I have to make sure that my, I'm not misrepresenting my work. You know, he has to make sure that he's putting the best of the best out there. Oh, I see. So, right? so yeah, so I, but I'm lucky in that this, as an educator, I can approach this from the perspective of someone who's learning and I could be someone who's comfortable sharing the fact that I don't know what I'm doing sometimes. And that your work may not be perfect and brand yeah. on brand. And can yeah. you, can you yeah. scroll back up on your screen to mm -hmm. the, um, the animation that you were just showing us on your phone, the one that you said, oh, yeah, yeah. the one that you said started off kind of rough. It was the black and white one. Um, um, wait, do you mean down? The one that, the, like you hear all these things like this one too. It was like, I'm going to draw this guy walking. And I was like, yeah, I can't, I don't know what I'm doing. I was just going to make him like walking and it, it just became this study instead of, um, and this one, let me see this one. There's another one where it's like, I didn't know what I was doing. I just playing. Uh -huh. um, and actually you, you know, the younger people probably don't know him, but John Cleese, I used to look up things about being more, um, not creative, but being more successful creatively, like working better. Remember what I was always thinking about, like the, the doing something better, like no one ever says help. But he said the best thing that I've ever heard uh, of 
uh, if you want to be successful as an artist, you have to approach it with a sense of play. He, 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 and I, it was such an interesting thing. And I feel like I've kind of made it there. Like this stuff, like this is playful. I'm not making it for anybody, but it, it's like, it's how I stay in shape in a way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and this, this is actually the work I was, tr- this is what I was trying to brand myself as. I was looking at that one yesterday. Yeah. This is what I was trying to do. Uh, this one reminds me of Escher's hand. Oh yeah, that's right. But this, this ended up being very, very time consuming. But if I had just kept doing it, it would have gotten easier. It wasn't very hard, but when it came down to like mistakes or things that I couldn't resolve, it got exhausting. So this style was really fun and I loved it, but it was kind of destructive when it came to troubleshooting. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a matter of like, if you really want to go into the arts, like I can't recommend it enough. If I did not go, I spent eight years trying to be a full-time artist and I had a million part-time jobs, um, which I love, (laughs) Uh, but do any of any of uh, the students on the call have any questions for for Jay Jack? I meant to I meant to ask you if you had questions earlier. Um, please feel free to you know unmute your mic and at any time and interrupt him. <laughs> it's fine. I mean, just in general, I just feel like you do it for you and just enjoy it for yourself. You know, I'm always practicing. I do want to get, I'm, I'm pretty good at realism, but it's not my main focus. But if I want to do it, I can do it. I spent a lot of time. Actually, somebody asked a question about this. Yeah, one of my students, he's not here uh, mm-hmm. today, but yes, uh, Jaquel was asking, he was drawn to this one. Talk to us about this one. So this is just funny. I mean, it, this is one of those things that I just do to make myself laugh. Like, and honestly, like look, when I make artwork, I often I'm just like almost like crying laughing at the dumbest things that I can come up with and th- this if people may not know about this stuff now but in the old days post vintage postcards are just incredibly weird if you ever look at old postcards like these are the kind of things that they would have like at like a gas station for tourists <laughs> and you look back at some of these things you're like what were they thinking and so I you know, actually, if you, if I kind of like have come to, to, to the um, way of looking at myself as almost like a character artist, like uh, in movies, you have those superstars who are like, this is that huge actor, like The Rock or um, Vin Diesel, two bald muscle guys. But um, I find that I just like to do things that can be read as having been done by somebody. I like to pretend that I didn't make this and that I found it. Oh, I see. That's cool. And so I look at this and I imagine myself digging through a box of vintage postcards and I would be like, oh my God, I have got to own that. <laughs> but it makes no sense. Laugh and I laugh with you. Right. He's got a gun, guns and roses pendant on him and it's a gorilla's body with some guy, some hipster guy with a beard and Anne Hathaway's That's eyes. Tattoo. It is just so dumb. <laughs> No, I like it. I mean, it's how random is that? Like, this is a real tattoo that somebody had. And it was like, they got a Marcy tattoo on their eye and then they crossed it out. <laughs> That's a real thing. So I don't really know if our students know who that is. That's like someone we were listening yeah, to in the yeah, 80s. He, yeah, he's a very depressed musician. And the Smiths, like, right? Yeah. But I just, you know, kind of fell in love with experimenting and just trying different things. It's like... um you know, just throwing challenges at myself. Like I took this face, actually I could show you how I did this. Yeah, that'd be cool. I cut it up, it was like a skeleton. No, oh, I didn't go far enough, but I just took a skull, I cut it up into little pieces and then I found a way to connect the gaps that I created. Oh, sorry, Donald. <laughs> and these are also like, just like Photoshop experiments. Like some of them just come together so well. You've got <laughs> such a, like, there's such a, creep factor to some of some oh, I see your work I'm like oh but it's I'm oh, sorry it makes me yeah this one that one so go back to that um oh Oof. god I know so I that, that so you've got that one the eyeball mm-hmm. on top of the face scroll yeah. back down oh yeah yeah and then you have the illustration to the right of it so talk to us about how uh-huh. you went from a to b so 
a lot of our, you know, AP art right. students. Right. Need. So this is actually something that I've thought about for years, but I remember being surprised. Like I could make something like this and it never really gets much of a reaction. That's been like shocking to me because I could build an image out of like 500 images and then someone looks at it and I'll be like, that's also one of the misleading things about social media is like you could draw something and be absolutely amazed by it and then four people like it. <laughs> and you're like, what, what happened? What did I do wrong? I posted the wrong time. Like what? And I'm not like looking for that validation. I feel it within myself, but it's surprising sometimes, but right. I find sometimes that people don't understand Photoshop illustration. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's not, yeah, they don't understand photo illustration. Does it really get the reaction? And so I decided to try to use it as I was going to use this as a drawing reference and then what I realized is like I could actually turn it into a drawing or, or make it look like a drawing just by using Photoshop um, work I love it I'm so, so excited by that I do I do I have to say that um, I prefer this one to yeah <laughs> right I do I do and I think that um, I mean, you're still using Photoshop, but like you said, you're making it, you're taking, you're taking it to the next level and you're, right. you're yeah. No, and, and that's, that's one of the things that I've realized is that, you know, these um, things that I'm doing just for fun, they have, you know, they're, they have, they're, there's a lot of things I can do with them. The creep factor is funny for me because when I, 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 that's another one of those, the two things actually comic book stuff and horror stuff. Okay, when yeah. I was a, a kid. Yeah, well, you like those two things. Yeah, but it, there's a reason why, though. When I was a young person, I was so intimidated by drawing realistic comics because you always get that criticism, like you drew Batman wrong. And so I started to avoid it and only do abstract, like mushy cartoons because oh. it would only be my thing. So there's a huge um, excitement for me being able to kind of copy them, you know, accurately, or at least I can now approach it with a sense of play even though when I was a kid, I would be so afraid of doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. And now like I could just do whatever I want. Look, like that's not perfect, not at all. But now I have the freedom to kind of approach it in my own way. Like the horror, when I was a kid, horror stuff, I hated it. Absolutely hated it. And then as I got older, I kind of appreciated the, the craft of it. And I know I, I hate, I really get upset when people look at things like this and get sick because I, I know what that used to feel like for me. But when I look at that, I just remember how much stuff, how many, how many different layers I use and how much work I, I did. That, that Trump one? Yeah. And I feel bad about it. Like I've, I've put up like warnings before, like uh, for a John Travolta thing I did years ago. But like when I look at the, oh, it's disgusting. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it makes me laugh. It kills me. I just think That's it's so okay. funny. Do, so any, do any of our students or, or, or adults on the line. Does anybody have a question for Jay Jack? I'm gonna post in the chat. It's okay, but yeah, you can post your questions in the chat too if you wish. And here's another weird Photoshop thing. God, do you all know? Do you all use Photoshop? <laughs> Did you know that there's something called? Yes, um, we all do. It is insane. Properties. You go into properties, and there's a button that says remove background. You think about all the years I've spent cutting things out in Photoshop, like drawing, carefully drawing a line around it. Uh-huh, select editing. tools. You go into, yeah, but now you just go into property. I didn't know that, is this a no. new thing? Yes, and every day, I, I, it's so embarrassing that there'll be these moments where I'm like, wait, when did that happen? There's so many new things happening in all these programs. But when I discovered remove background, it, uh -huh. yeah. Oh my God. Think about the hours I've lost cutting things out in the past. And now I was just doing that as a test. I know the Trump thing. Some people are, are not really in, into that stuff, but you know, these are again, like just wooden sculptures. And this is all about how, and you know, this is like one of those weird psychological things you learn about yourself. So uh, I, I, you know, I'm, I am a really devoted illustrator. And so I know when my energy is bad that I'm not going to be able to live up to my expectations of myself. So there, there was a moment in the summer where I was kind of, my daughter started waking up at like 5am. And so I was in this horrible, stressed out, exhausted state. 
-hmm. And so I started picking up drift. We would go to the beach. Her and I live near the beach in Long Beach, New York. From Queens, Long Beach is my favorite part, place in New York City. But I started picking up driftwood on the beach when we would go to the beach. And then just- yeah, open, up, uh, open up another one. And I just started absentmindedly carving these things while I was watching TV. Like that's what it started with. Mm -hmm. And the wood is kind of like wet and kind of damaged. And I would just take an X-Acto blade and just kind of like, I just started breaking away all the wood to mm -hmm. see what was left. And so it starts out with this, just like this dirty, sandy piece of wood. And then I just started basically like, it's so um, water damaged that it would just literally brush away like, like just dust. Mm -hmm. And so just pushing it away and then oh, that's you know, got to this and, oh, wow. what, and it's one of those things where like, if I saw this at a museum, I'd be like, what? Who cares? What's the point? I mean, I, I wouldn't say that now. I wouldn't say that now. But years ago, if I saw this in a museum, I'd be like, "Who? What is the? You well, know, like I'd be still the work of like Noguchi and Bar Barancusi and yeah. Um. So, but, so who are who are some of your 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 favorite artists? Uh, yeah. Famous or otherwise, like who who are your favorite people? Who do you go to for inspiration? I mean, I have a lot of comic book artists like that. I, lo I just love like the. Um, I, I even that like uh, comic book artist is one of the reasons I wanted to become a teacher is because so many I'm sorry if I'm going off on a tangent here but the comic artists would get ill and they didn't have insurance and they would have like all these ads in these magazines they would say um, this artist they, one of my favorite Batman artists had a stroke and oh, it was like he, uh, his name was Norm Brayfogle and I just loved his work and he drew with such amazing energy and then he had a stroke and he lost the ability to draw. Wow. And then what he, he, he can't make a living anymore. And so he was basically all of his savings were gone overnight because he didn't have insurance. Uh, and, and that kind of stuff is so scary to me, especially as a type one diabetic, like, but my favorite artists, like I have so many favorite artists. It's kind of, you know, like this is by an artist named Wally Wood and I just redrew it. Um, I mean, it probably would be like a lot of comic artists, like Jack Kirby is my actually, can show can i share my am i still sharing i'm still sharing the screen oh my gosh yeah you uh, are still sharing your screen can, can you I, um look up uh can you uh, see this yeah yeah We're, the batman uh i think i'm sharing a different screen hold on a sec can you you're share? on your instagram right now yeah yeah let me switch to photoshop um yeah this one so this is, um, I, I inked this. This is a sketch by Jack Kirby. So tell us what that means, you inked it, because not everyone will know what that means. Yeah, let me turn it on. Sorry, there's um, too many layers, man. This is, this is, this is nice. Oh, there, there. No, I got it. I got You've it. been in Instagram for so long. Yeah. Um, We've got 10 more minutes. I'd love to see how you work in Photoshop here. So this is perfect. So this is how I inked it. And I had a pencil drawing. Yeah, Sorry. tell us. This, here's a tip for everybody. Label Not everyone knows what inking is. So you start with a pencil sketch. Yeah, label your files in Photoshop. I, I'm, I was just like picking around with this. I wasn't taking it very seriously. You mean your layers? Yeah, I mean, I usually try to label uh, my, oh, there it is, there it is, got it. Okay, let me turn this off. This is the pencil sketch I started with. And That's then I worked, yeah, I worked over it with a lasso tool. This is how I like to draw in Photoshop. I still have not mastered the um, tablets. I'm not really into tablets. I try and try. It's hard, and right? I just, I don't know. I can't get into a rhythm with it. Uh, and so I just basically just like draw a shape like this and then I fill it in. Like so, that. so go back to your pencil drawing for a second. Yep. It wasn't mine. It was, uh, it's, Jack Kirby's one of my favorite artists, so I, I just- You took someone else's drawing. Yeah, and I inked it. And, and this is, I, I brought this up because he's can one of my you, favorite. Can you go to that um, first, la the layer of the pencil sketch mm -hmm. yeah. of the original drawing and mm -hmm. show us with your lasso tool how you um, like make a fresh layer? Yeah, got it. And yeah, show and so, us yeah. how you start inking. Yeah, so what I've been doing is like, because I use a trackpad and I, I'm not, I've never really had a tablet, so. I just started getting good at drawing on the, on the on the trackpad. So I would just go to levels. I'm not levels. I'm sorry. Lasso tool right here. Just hit letter L for the key command, 
and then hold down option before you start. And so when it's a straight line, you could use points, see? And then when it comes to like a curve like that, I would usually try to do that freehand. And so I would just kind of like, like all the curves I do freehand. And if so, I- So when you are in the regular lasso tool, holding mm -hmm. down the option gives you the ability to go geometric and freehand with one tool. Mm -hmm. And this is because I have a trackpad and I've come to just, uh, I just enjoy it more. Uh, another thing that you can do is maybe like turn the opacity down. So like if, if I was trying to be 100% accurate, I can now go back with the points and use, actually, wait, can I just see if uh, this happens every once in a while, but it's like, here, look, uh, I'm gonna now delete that section because I want that to be more perfect. This little line right there is a straight line. I'm gonna get rid of that. Mm -hmm. Something else actually I did. Oh, you know what? You're essentially you're 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 inking it yeah. with the lasso tool yeah. and filling. Making some yeah, filling in. It's imperfect, but I you know I have the ability to not have to worry about being perfect. See, look, I also put a stroke on it to make it a little bit bolder to kind of get rid of some of the um the little tiny lines. Mm -hmm. So little things like that. I mean, it's just and I, I do this for fun. Like, you know, it's like it's I'm always building and that's what i love about making art is that it's just like a strength that i could just keep building nobody's looking for it nobody's waiting for it it's just for me mm -hmm. <clears throat> well that's the you advantage know. of or the difference um between working exclusively as a professional artist and working yeah. on your deadline and you have to get mm -hmm. this illustration right. to this magazine on this date before I became a teacher, I was working in publishing. Yeah. And we would, um, I was in the art department and mm -hmm. um, we would hire illustrators. Right. Um, for different stories. And um, yeah, they, they worked on deadline and. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's rough. Like the illustration stuff, like. Um, so show us what you, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead, please, please, please. What were you gonna say? No, you were in the middle of answering something. No, I was going to say that in, I, I still, when I was teaching um, in 2013, I still took on occasional freelance work if I, if, if it came about and, and, you know, it can get, you know, a lot of times, like this is what kept happening. I'd get a job on, let's say like a Thursday, bring me in on a Thursday and they'd be like, all right, send us your sketches tomorrow. And then I would send them sketches and they don't get back to me on Friday. They don't get back to me on Saturday. They get back to me on Sunday afternoon. And now I have like five hours to kind of finish this work before it's, like, before it's, you know, and I had a job that I, the first time, I mean, the second time in my life, once in college, I was awake for 24 hours. And in with this job, it was like 8 a.m. in the morning until 8 a.m. the next day. Oh, it was torture. So that kind of stuff gets rough with like illustration stuff because you can't really depend on sometimes it just happens you know like uh i've had jobs that are like here you have two weeks to do this and then they call me back can you finish that in two hours literally that's happened to me <laughs> like can you do that in two hours because they're going to kill the job if you don't finish it now so we've only got a couple more minutes can you um back up yeah. uh, zoom out a little and show us all the different layers that you made on this guy oh yeah yeah thanks that is another one of those things in photoshop i was just messing around with color stuff but so I use, um, actually, it's interesting. I've never seen this before. When you create a group, it says pass through. I've never seen that before. Yeah, I don't. I, it's the same as multiply, essentially. But uh, that's the kind of thing that got really exciting for me. Um, another thing that people might be into, like here, I could, so yeah, I'll just go through the layers first. So yeah. Green, I got green. That sets it multiply. What is that? Nothing. Uh, and this is another thing that I started to do because I'd wind up with so many layers. So I've had this happen where I'm like, all right, I got to turn this off because I want to see my line. I got to turn that off and that off. When you have all of your work, and there's like the airbrush thing I'm doing. I'm using airbrush on, not airbrush, but you know what I mean. Creating a tone using multiply. With the same thing, lasso tool. And then I do a little bit of like soft brush airbrush in there. But having too many layers, if you group them, you could turn them all off. So all my color layers are off now. And then my line layers I was turning off just to show you, but 
Let me see. So yeah, actually wanted to show you this. What did you end up doing with once this file was finished? What 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 did you um, do with him? I, I usually what I do is I save different versions as um like I'll save it as like um the line art I save as one and I have like a whole system like I have like versions so it'd be like one A one B one C because I'd have like five different versions of a line art issue you know I put textures on it like let me see if I can find the other one. One of my students, mm -hmm. Dimitri, our our comic artist, he he wrote in the chat. Um, sounds like Togashi. Togashi? Do I know Togashi? Dimitri, who's Togashi? Uh, he's an artist who um does his uh cartoon called the uh, Hunter X Hunter, and. He does like initial chapters monthly, mm -hmm. but he got a uh, like sick health issues, so it's oh, been yeah. on a hiatus. Hmm. Oh, he had yeah. to stop working because of his health. No, he didn't stop working. He just like it is really slow. It comes out really slow mm -hmm. now. Oh, I see. So, he's so not as fast. Yeah, I just work ethic. Like, slow down. Yo, he's good. That guy's cool. That's oh, great style. Cool. Is that the kind of stuff you're interested in? I love his style. He's great. Look at that. So you know what's interesting is um, before we hang up, um, I don't know if you have have noticed or had this experience, but um, a lot of the art schools, um, art colleges, right? Mm -hmm. Parsons, SVA, and so on. Um, when they are looking at student art portfolios mm -hmm. to, for admitting admission. Yeah. Mm. Um, they request no manga. What? How could they do that? It's a thing. That's ridiculous. See, this is this is the thing that is absolutely making me crazy because so how, how is it different than life drawing? You're still, I mean, I, I get it. I get it. There's so like that's, certain things, that's yeah, but let's hear your response to it that. Shapes, it is shapes and lines. It is shapes and line. It's the same, but th this is something that I've experienced myself is that people will not take something like this. I thought that all that kind of stuff was changing. I mean, I, I do know that for your portfolio, you always want to be diverse, have different styles and show that you can do realism because that's all that, that's my bitter bitterness. Like uh, all that matters is realism. That's all that matters. But when you have the right community around you, you'll have people who appreciate the stuff that you're doing. So that's one of the most urgent things for me is like just surround yourself with people who believe in what you're doing. That's your professional network. So start networking now. All the people who, who care about you and respect you and are building you up, that's your network. Well, do any of my students have any questions? I can ask them questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to end on time just to respect um, your for time. Sure. Um, thank you so, 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 so much for coming to visit and speak to us about your work and your thoughts. No, you're welcome. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to do it. I mean, I just find, I, I just like to share the story of being a New Yorker and a first generation artist because it, it really is a lot of work and it's hard. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to, you're going to get a lot of people be negative to you and this is why I was saying about the community, like when you have the right people around you, they're gonna help you get through that stuff. But also, <clears throat> like I mentioned about the guy who's been in 300 fights, you also have a way of coping with things that other people don't have. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind, most people in the world don't have creativity. They, they maybe have things that they do, but they don't have, or this, does that sound too extreme? Uh, no, I think no, be, no, I think people who don't have hobbies, like or it hasn't don't. been cultivated in them. I right. think that right. we all start off, as you said, as children, we all start off very free and open and creative, and it's it it gets it gets um, squashed yeah. as right because as they don't they don't know how to appreciate it. They don't necessarily mean to hurt you, but they don't know how to help cultivate what you're doing. So. Well, Thank you for being a cultivator and a supporter. <laughs> I'm grateful for your time and, and, and your wisdom and everything. Um, oh, thank you. Thanks for coming, everybody. And, you know, just, you know, don't let anybody get you down. Like you're doing way better than you think you are.
You know, you're gonna you're gonna look back at your work, and for the first few years, you're gonna be critical. But then, maybe 20 years from now, you'll say, "God, I was so much better than I realized." <laughs> you really are. You're doing so much better than you think. And Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, have a great day, and I'll speak to okay. you. Soon. Okay. Bye. 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 Thank you.